What's good, YouTube? So I've been sitting here thinking a lot about the documentary project that I'm going to be starting, and a big question arose to me that led to another question, and this question was, why do people argue what is a premier top so much? And then the question that came from that is, why does it matter so much? And the reason it matters actually leads to a much bigger field of expansion and that people really only have credentials in this game when it comes down to it at the end of the day. And that's what makes this community one of the best. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So I was sitting there looking at numbers and there's less than 150 YCS slash Shonen Jump champions. And out of a group like, say, Zodiac Duels that's 30,000 people deep and very active, it, it's a very small percent. That's less than half of a percent of the users that have this title. Now, there's a much bigger percent of people that have tops. This number is not really measurable because of so many people with multiple tops, but I would assume it's somewhere in the 3,000, 4,000 range of individuals. That's still about, you know, a small percent of the user base and when you go into the community and people are like who are you people often use that as their disclaimer and why is that it's the only form of measurement so I like to make parallels with other communities and the fighting game community is the one I use most often because it's a gaming community that's very tight-knit and has multiple other communities within its community. You have Smash, you have Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, you have Street Fighter, you have different views and it's much like the card game community where you have Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! So, what makes fighting games so much different in their community? Well, first off, Yu-Gi-Oh! gets to avoid something called pop monsters. What is a pop monster? A pop monster is somebody that enters a tournament knowing that they cannot win. They are not skilled enough to beat multiple other people in the tournament, but they have gauged that the field is good enough for them to enter and then be able to top and make the money. So they are literally entering with the sake of not winning but making the money. Now in Yu-Gi-Oh, you cannot win money by playing unless you make top 8 or better, and it really depends on your travel situation. Most of the time, top 3 or better is what you would have to do to make money out of a field of 800 plus players at a YCS. And at a regional, your travel costs, you would need to top 8 or get your invite. And many people are there for their invites, the glory, so to speak, rather than the money. So a huge part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community and what we are trying to achieve is not the money because it's non-existent unless you're using a second party kind of thing like ARG to try to win money because we as a community are going for the glory. Now, here's an interesting thing that I talked with my roommate about. If you were to go to H. Potley and say, I'm John Moore, I'm Shonen Jump Champion 2008 Six Samurai, what would they care? But if I go into community and I go and say, well, what have you done? And your answer is nothing and you were trying to diss my gaming skills. Yes, my win is eight years old. It does not matter that it's eight years old. It is a win. It is something that less than 150 people have achieved in this game. And it doesn't matter if I summarize the field that I did it through or what I've done to do it. I have a win. And when I say it doesn't matter what I did to do it, as long as you didn't cheat, it doesn't matter what you did to do it. So, there's a lot of people who would argue that Yu-Gi-Oh!'s community is so hard-driven and so passionate and the way that they are, they're so hyperactively intense because the only way to get known is to win slash top over and over and over and over. So this leads to the question of what can we take away from Yu-Gi-Oh!? We can only take away friendships and lessons that we've learned. 
There's no way to plus on it unless you are trading, buying, selling, etc., which is not allowed at events, so you're basically going against policy of almost any tournament organizer to be able to make money. So, realistically, we have aspects of the community that are set aside that are actually favorable to our community as what we experience through players because things like pop monsters do not exist. But, on the other extreme, we have ultra competitive people that think of nothing but winning and think that winning means everything or tops mean everything. So tell me in the comments below what you think. Do you think avoiding things like pop monsters and avoiding certain parts and aspects of other communities through what we've done has made the Yu-Gi-Oh! community a better community or worse community? And uh, let me know what you guys think about this discussion. Uh, I'm not trying to open the what is a premier talk discussion. I'm trying to open the what drives our community discussion. Thanks for watching, guys. And be sure to tune in as we're going to be doing a lot more videos on the channel as the format actually develops when we get a new band list. Be sure to subscribe and also check out the Zodiac Facebook and stream. The links are below. And always feel free to comment and talk about these videos.